sure. So period poverty is something that is very intricately linked with menstrual stigma. Menstrual stigma is when you treat menstruation as something which is a taboo and which cannot be spoken about, which is why you also come away from buying period products or products that can help with sanitation during your menstruation. So this leads to very, very unhygienic con conditions for all menstruators because, you know, just using cloth or any other substitute apart from genuine period products cannot really help you go through that experience in a, a sanitary manner. And also because the stigma, it has put this into people's minds that period products brought from outside are unholy things which should not be brought into the house because of which menstruators still have to make do with cloth in uh, especially the more rural or economically backward areas of uh, third of countries like India, where it creates a really big problem for all the menstruators. There is a activist about um, who aims to spread awareness about period poverty, and her name is Megha Dese. Do not want to pronounce that wrong. I looked it up before it, beforehand, so apologies if I did pronounce that wrong. But um, she did share her story about this, saying that she was too embarrassed to ask her uncle to buy sanitary pads and had to use old rags and shirts to manage her period. And that just proves that it is a very common phenomenon that a lot of people unfortunately go through. And we do want to talk about how um, this can also just lead to very poor hygiene and this can also cause like infections or worse things in general. Um, so we do want to make sure that everybody gets this sort of access to period products. It's like, I don't know if you've ever had any experience with this. I'm going to ask you, actually, have you ever had experience or know somebody who has had experience with just like feeling ashamed of their body for menstruating or anything like that? Um, so yes, I do know people like that. Basically, as I said, because of the stigma, there is not much information about it. I think we'll talk about it more in more detail later when we come to it. But yes, because there is not much information, people, especially young girls or young menstruators, when they begin their periods, they think that something very scary is happening to them. They are not really sure what it is that is going on in their bodies because of which they are scared and it leads to physical stress, mental mental health problems as well. And yes, of course, they are ashamed because they think that what abnormal thing is happening to me. They don't do not know that these are normal changes that their body will go through during pu uh, puberty. Right. So which is why period products can sometimes be costly for people from lower income households to buy. So if, you, if you're not getting to eat for days on end, how can you expect such a household to be focused on, uh, you know, menstrual hygiene? Right. So um, it is these effects are felt in lower income households where menstruators do not have access to period products as well. Uh, also, where the, in places where this is more stigmatized, women especially are not allowed to go out no matter how important work they have. They because they have to hide. As I said, it is something shameful. And, you know, because of that, many people choose to skip school which as we know is very detrimental and this this basically is a big problem it, it can be seen as a hindering of people's dreams and aspirations in fact um and just to throw some more facts out 71 percent of people don't know what a period is due to period poverty and the stigma around it or 75 of percent of bleeders are at risk to infection due to lack of resources and lastly 23 people drop or not people not 23 people but 23 percent of people <laughs> drop out of school after period due to you know that stigma around periods and um you know that uh sort of isolation that we were talking about has caused them to drop out of schools or not engage in daily activities um but just to um, raise more awareness <clears throat> around the subject, there are some doc documentaries that you really need to watch. I actually need to watch one of these documentaries, but I've already watched the other one. But um, Pandora's Box is a really good do documentary, documentary that you should watch about period poverty, as well as on Netflix, actually, there is a film called Period... Uh sure. So... 
in india especially even though there is a pride movement and people have been working very hard to ensure equality for the lgbtqia plus community but still especially among the older generations there is no recognition of the community as of yet so basically you know the connotation is that everyone who is assigned female at birth is a woman and a woman has to menstruate that is one side of the spectrum second thing if a person is menstruating that automatically makes them a woman so as mm-hmm. we can see both of these happen to be very very problematic for example if you do not identify as a woman and you still menstruate as we know that you know sometimes trans people gender diverse people they menstruate even though they might not identify as women so that leads to a lot of stigma around them like for example you were assigned male at birth how can you menstruate you should be ashamed you you should you know uh, end yourself something like that and mm-hmm. on the other hand if if a person was assigned woman at, at birth and does not identify as a woman anymore they will be asked you know why are you not menstruating it is your duty it is i think that uh, the pandemic was like bittersweet in a way because you know, a lot of people were passing away and everybody was struggling as far as COVID-19 went. But there was also like amplified movement of certain issues such as period poverty or even mental health and things like that. So thank you, pandemic, I guess. But also, no, (laughs) no, you didn't have to do that. But um... you do not always need to do something big or phenomenal, quote unquote, to be able to make an impact. You can start as small as you and your family or you and your friend. No, firstly, recognize that periods are natural and periods are a biological process. Mm -hmm. It is not a choice. It is something that happens to you because of the way your bodily functions are structured, right? So once you recognize that, try and encourage open uh, conversation about menstrual stigma and period poverty. Try to involve as many people as possible. Do not try to shun away people from people from the other genders like say men or people from lgbtqia plus community they also need to know everybody needs to have awareness for example i have a little brother and i'm going to be the one to say it to him because otherwise nobody will ever so which is why try and encourage conversations across it and break the cycle if something if stigma is what has been passed down in your family for generations try and move out of it and see the problem as it should be seen uh, just try and support them to get through it and you know whenever you research about this issue or whenever you come across something try and verify the information before you act on it or take an information because as always there are many many fake organizations as well out mm-hmm. there who will just take your money as fun to and not use it for any good so only go with verified information and verified organizations but yeah, I think that, you know, as long as you are empathetic, as long as you are understanding, you can definitely, definitely make a difference. Like if we have the will, we will have the will. If you're passionate about something, do not let anything stop you. Do not let stigma around you stop you. Do not let people around you stop you. When I actually realized what periods were all about, I understood how depressed and stigmatized menstruators were in our society. And I knew that I wanted to raise my voice against it. So I went ahead and do it. Yes, you will face opposition, but never let that opposition stop you. If you really want to do it, you will be able to find a way. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you can advocate for any cause at any age you don't have to be like you don't have just because you're 14 doesn't mean you can't advocate for these um uh you know these issues so yeah don't let anything stop you and if you're passionate about something again advocate for it you are helping many many people by spreading the word and spreading awareness and starting the conversation so yeah 